Hello, and welcome to Precon Decon, the video series where I deconstruct the pre-constructed decks of Magic the Gathering's history. In this video, we're going to look at the last deck from Shards of Alara, which is Naya Behemoths, which is the red-green-white deck and representing the Shard of Naya from Alara. So let's let's dive in to look at that. So, uh, Naya's theme is stuff with power five or more matters. Um, and that's it. <laughs> that is just uh, it's just the theme. Just they like big creatures. Uh, that is it. So, um, and we'll see something like this in a in like in you know quite a few more videos when we go to Khans of Tarkir and we get the Tamur uh, Tamur Tamur. I've never known how to pronounce it, but the um, the green, red, blue uh, clan and their um, their ability ferocious, which cares about power four or more. So it's weird that it got keyworded like years later. Anyway, and why it was lowered from five to four. Anyway. Um, so Naya is kind of like proto that I suppose. So um, I say they're 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 um, they don't have a keyword ability, but I say they do have like all these effects that care about having things that that have power five or more. Um, so one of the rares in the deck is Spearbreaker Behemoth. So uh, five and two green for a five five. It's indestructible, and you can pay one to make tight creature with power five or more uh, indestructible. Uh, until end turn, which is like a pretty strong ability and would be pretty exciting, I think, for a new player to see that. Um, yeah, and there's you know quite a few creatures in the deck this works with, and yeah, it just means you know you can attack with you know saves your big creatures from removal. Um, yeah, it's just it's a very simple, straightforward ability, honestly. Uh, so yeah, I think it's a pretty good, solid intro deck rare to have. I think uh, we have a single Mostodon, which is I mean that is a grade. <laughs> like punny card names, you know. Uh, so four and a green for a five three. You can pay one to give target creature the power five greater trample and slender ten. Also note these um, you know these abilities that give um a creature power five uh, or greater like an ability it doesn't have to be your creature. So if you are playing like a uh, you know like a team game or a multiplayer game, you can do a little bit of um either help your teammate with their big creatures or if you're playing like a free for all, you can play a bit of politics, help out someone else when they're attacking another player. Maybe just you know just putting out there if you happen to be using old Naya cards these days in uh, in Commander or um or team games or whatever. Anyway, uh, but yeah, Mostod Mostodon is fine. Um, I really wish it just had Trample Inherent and it had the ability to give Trample like the Spearbreaker Behemoth does, but whatever, it is It is what it is. Um, and then we have a, a two Rake Claw Gargantuans. Uh, so two, a uh, red, a green, and a white for a 5-3, and uh, pay one to give a creature with power five or greater first strike until end of turn. And again, would have been nice if it had first strike inherently, but you know, it's it's fine as it is. So you know, giving something <laughs> you had Mostodon and the Rake Claw out, giving something trample and first strike, um, yeah, is is pretty good. You know, these obviously all they all synergize with each other. So yeah, these are uh, yeah, these are pretty fun and obviously really points you in the direction of where the deck wants to go, which is you know, just big big creatures. Um so we do have some more creatures here with power five or more. They don't have any abilities, but they are they are just big fatties. Uh so a single bull serodon, uh so four, one red, one white for a five five vigilance and haste. This is pretty good, honestly. This felt always really strong to play, um, just because you drop it and you immediately swing with it because it has haste. You know, it's five power, um, so it's pretty beefy, and you know it sticks around to block because it's got vigilance. Um, so yeah, this this always felt really good to play. Um, yeah, in um, Alari Born, we won't see it because none of the decks are enemy colored. But there's the Ceridon Yearling, which is like this, but it's just a it's a two two. Uh, for only two, so it was really f <laughs> it used to be really fun to have like uh, the Ceridon Yearling and then and then big mummy and daddy Ceridons in the same deck. Um, that always used to be kind of funny. But anyway, yeah, really good creature, really like it. Also, I think the only um, deck we've seen in Lara so far that is using um, one of the enemy color cards because I don't think any of us did. Like, um, there weren't many enemy color cards in shards. I think maybe only one per color. But um, yeah, because Bant had the Jesse and Infiltrator, which I don't think was in there, but I'm sure someone in the comments will say, or I'll just go back and watch the video. Um, Grixis has Swerve, which wasn't in there. Uh, Esper has the Tight Holo Sculler, which wasn't used. Jund has Necrogenesis, which is a card I suggested, I suggested having, but it didn't have. So yeah, I think this is the first deck to have uh, one of the enemy coloured uh, cards in there, which is, uh, which is a shame, because you know, it's always interesting design space when there's enemy colours involved. Anyway. 
Um, so a single cavern Thoctar, um, so five and a green for a five five, um, has like an expensive fire breathing ability. Um, I really don't know why it's <laughs> why it's six mana for a five five. I guess I guess we're still at the point in the game where green is not as efficient as it should be. But we're getting there, we're getting there. Um and it is common, I suppose. So um yeah, yeah. Just this is the thing with the uh sort of the Naya related cards, it's just a lot of them are, v are very expensive, just beasts. Um, <laughs> you know, with usually like no abilities or like, you know, just something like cycling or whatever. But um yeah, they're just big fatties to there to be there to gain the benefits of the power five or greater stuff. Uh two woolly thoctars. I remember this causing a bit of a fuss. Um not a fuss, but a bit of a hubbub um when it was when it was uh, spoiled because it's um three mana for just a five four with no no abilities or drawbacks or anything. But um it's in the thing with Naya is because it's in the classic like zoo colours. Um and you know, this being yeah, you, know, you potentially play this turn three, and like a five four on turn three is like pretty pretty good. Um so yeah, yeah, pretty good. And and two of them as well is is quite nice as well. Um, so we can't, it can't all be fatty, so there have to be, like, some smaller creatures. Uh, so we have two druid of the Anima, who is, like, the, I guess, like, the mana dork of the block, really. Uh, so one colors, one green for a 1-1, one, one, and taps to give you red or green or white. So one more expensive than Lanor Elves, but it can branch out and give you extra colors of mana, so it's okay. Um, really would like there to have been three of these, honestly, to ramp up into the, um, the Gargantuans a bit easier, but it's, it's as is, it's fine, you know. Um, a single Naya Battle Mage, so two and a green uh, for a 2-2, two, two. Uh, one red to uh, give target creature plus two plus an alt turn, turn, which is actually pretty good, because then you can potentially then use this to make some of your smaller creatures into power five or greater, so then they can get the benefits of your Gargantuan, so that's quite interesting. Um, and one white, just tap target creature, great ability to have, um, really giving me um, Thornscape Apprentice vibes, all the way back from Invasion, just like, just the one white to tap a creature, it's just always such a good ability, always like the decoy ability. Uh, two wild and a cattle, uh, single green for a 1-1, one, one, uh, but it gets plus one plus one as you, if you control a mountain and you have a plains, it also gets plus one plus one. So if you have all three out, it is a 3-3. Three, three. Um, and if you are playing with lands that have multiple, uh, land types, then yep, this could be potentially a, a 2-2, two, two, uh, on turn one potentially um so yeah and it's kind of interesting there's uh there's two of them as well so uh yeah and the fact it sort of scales up without you really having to do much i think it's pretty good yeah just fine just fine i think um two silly and elf uh so one cause one green just for a two two it's just bears i have no idea why this was printed like we're definitely at the point in the game's history where green can have two twos for two with abilities and so I have no idea why this was just printed with no abilities. Like, it's just complete vanilla, and I have no idea why. It could have had, I don't know, just anything. Like, if you, I don't know, off the top of my head, if you can control a creature with power five or more, it has tap, add green or something. You know, just, I don't know, just something like that. Just anything. Just just to be better than just a 2-2 two, two for two. I, I said, no idea why they they printed just that. You know, and when it's definitely at this point, green has had better. Um, you know, just in Time Spiral... Um, you know, before this, well, not before this, because obviously we had Thorwind as well, but like we had Ashcoat Bears, which was 2 2 for 2 with Flash, which has actually, I don't think, ever been reprinted. But um, yeah, just it's, it's just infuriating, honestly. Um, and then we have two giant growths, one green just to give plus 3 plus 3 to 10. Yep, yep, normal classic giant growth. I really like the start on giant growth, actually, it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, two of those. Um, and then a single naturalize, uh, we all know what naturalize does, just destroys an artifact or enchantment. Uh, we have two Gift of the Gargantuan, so this is kind of like a, sort of a ramp spell, I suppose, not a ramp, it's, um, you know, it's sort of a limited tutor. Um, so two and a green, uh, you look at the top four cards of your library, you reveal a creature card and or a land card, so you can get both, which is cool. And uh, you put the revealed cards into your hand and the rest go in the bottom of your library in any order. Um, so this, you know, the fact this potentially lets you get a land and a creature um, for three mana straight into your hand is, I think, pretty okay. I think it's all right. I've seen, yeah, there's, I think there's worse, <laughs> there's worse spells for sure. Um, yeah, I think this works pretty well in the deck. Um, especially when, yeah, there's, it's quite weighted towards, yeah, both lands and creatures, obviously. Uh, two Rampant Growth can't have a fatty deck without some sort of ramp. So yeah, Rampant Growth is very welcome here. Uh, and a single Blaze to go along with this ramp, I suppose. Um, Blaze just does X damage. Yep. So a lot of actually 10th edition cards in this, in this deck. 
Uh, so the other rare deck is Titanic Ultimatum. Um, so it's really fun that this is the uh, one of the other decks with an ultimatum in it. Um, the other being the Grix one. So two red, three green, two white. Until end turn, creature control get plus five, plus five, and gain first rate lifelink and trample, uh, which is obviously huge. Um, you know, if you can if you can get this off first, I mean, like at seven mana, you should be doing all right anyway. You should be close to closing out the game anyway. Um, but yeah, this obviously is is such a huge huge boost. Um, um, you know, even if your opponent, you know, survives an attack from all this, all this stuff, like you will have gained a load of life from lifelink, um, you'll have done a lot of damage. So yeah, really, it it feels very win more, you know, because you're already playing a load of fat creatures. So to throw this on top, it feels, it feels excessive, you know. Um, I've I've um, just a, a single funny story about Titan Titanic Ultimatum. So when we were, when Alara came up, we were playing at our local kind of card shop, and um, someone got like this deck. He got like I think two of these Naya decks and sort of mashed them together. And we were playing you know, like a big group game and stuff. And uh, you know they they popped off Titanic Ultimatum and they did something that let them copy it. So or they might have just cast two. I don't know. The game went on for a really long time. Might have just cast two just to you know to flex really so all his creatures got plus 10 plus 10 first strike lifelink trample and he's like oh, i'm gonna wing swings you know swings creatures at everyone hoping to like you know get rid of all three other players and someone cast fog and that was the last time he played magic the gathering because <laughs> the the next week he was selling his collection so uh that's my that's my titanic ultimatum story um but yeah it's it's a great card i really like it it's just such it's such casual swingy big dumb fun i like it really embodies naya um and then two jungle shrines and two naya paranormas so this is the only alara deck that doesn't have a obelisk which i mean it doesn't need it because it's got the um the druid the druid of the anima so it doesn't it doesn't need an obelisk um so yeah just the the triland and the panorama is normal and then mana base there, uh, just the normal 7-3-3 three, three split that we've seen in all the other decks. Um, so what could have been? Well, I think Elvish Visionary. I think instead of the Cillian Elf, um, this would have been a lot better. I mean, just because it lets you draw a card. You know, it's, it, it makes it so much better immediately. Just being a 1-1 one, one that lets you draw a card for two. Like, really good. Really like Elvish Visionary. Um, Lush Growth, I thought, could have gone in here. Um, to make an Enchanted Land, it counts as then a Mountain, a Forest, and a Plains. So this is good. This um gives um Wild and the Cattle like all its bonuses just for being one land, which I think is pretty good. And you know, then also the land can tap for red or green or white, which is useful in the deck. Um Mighty Emergence I thought could be okay. Um so two and a green. Whenever a creature with power five or greater comes into play under your control, you can put two counts on it, so your fatties uh can be even fatter, as the flavor text says, why settle for mere enormity? Um, Drum Hunter, I thought would have been okay. Um, so three and a green, uh, two, two. So there's actually a load of these, um, uh, these kind of druids across the three colors that, um, specifically interact with creatures with power five or more. And like, they're not in here, which is a shame. Um, so Drum Hunter is, you know, um, they all usually have like tap to give you one colors as well to help you, obviously help you like ramp up into the gargantuans. Um, but at the end of your turn, if you control a creature with power five, great, you draw a card. So this helps you just, I know, just keep drawing cards and as I say, it helps you ramp up and stuff and just has that nice kind of synergy with the fat creatures. So, yeah. Uh, Soul's Fire, I think, could have been more interesting than Blaze, honestly. Uh, so two and a red, uh, target creature control in play deals damage equal to its power to target creature player. So, yep, you've got, like, really big creatures, so might as well use them to do some burn damage as well. It's fine. Uh, Naya Charm, again, like, none of the decks had a charm in them. I thought this one did, but no, obviously not. Uh, so one, one green, one red, one green, one white. Uh, choose one. Either does three damage to target creature, or return a card in a graveyard to owner's hand, or tap all creatures to target player controls. Those are three like pretty good abilities. That that last one to tap all creatures down to leave them like wide open for a you know a big swing is obviously really really good. Um, but the other two effects are really good as well. I think. Um, I don't know about this as a alternate rare, but where Ancient's Tread is just such a fun card, I want to talk about it. Um, so five mana enchantment. Whenever a creature with power five or greater comes into play under your control, you can have where Ancient's Tread deal five damage to target creature or player. So you're playing your big creatures, and then also like doing five lots of burn to um to something else, which is just you know that's very swingy. It's gonna get out of control very quickly. Um, and the other one I thought, Sasellum Godspeaker. 
Um, so two and a green for a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, tap, reveal any number of uh, creature cards with power five or greater from your hand. You add one green for every card revealed this way. So again, just helps you round. Like if you've got your big creatures in your hand, you're not casting them. You can use this to hopefully like power them out or you know cast other spells. But I thought this could be an okay rare. But I'm yeah I'm happy with the Spearbreaker Behemoth and the um and the Titanic Ultimatum. I think those are both fine rares. I just kind of wanted to talk about these two. Uh, so in summary, I think this one's okay. Uh, it's kind of like middle of the road. I think out of all of them, um, yeah, you know, it's just big fat creatures. Um, annoyingly, there's quite a lot of the. There's kind of more, it feels like there's more tenth edition cards in here than than other decks, but um. You know, I say the deck, the cards here are okay. Are okay. Um, the Cillian Elf, I, like it, really bothers me <laughs> that card even exists. Honestly, more more than any other like bad vanilla creature that we've seen in any of these other decks. But yeah, um, could have done with a few more big creatures, I think, um, because it doesn't have many. But then again, I say we're only working with forty one cards, aren't we? But yeah, um, so overall, I I like it. I think I I think I probably bought this one. Yes, I definitely bought this one because I have. A Spearbreaker Behemoth, and I can't think of any other reason why I would have one. Um, so yeah, what did you think of this deck after seeing it? Uh, do you have any thoughts or opinions or stories about this deck? Uh, or any stories about specific cards? Any stories along the lines of Titanic Ultimatum and Fog? Um, but yeah, stick a comment below if you do. Um, I'll give them a read, but we are now done with Shards of Alara. So in the next video, we're going to move on and we're going to start talking about uh, Conflux. Um, so I hope you'll join me for that. But until then, thanks for watching and listening. Have a great day.